I'm not really sure if we already had a patch this long on TFT. And honestly, I'm just too lazy to read it. And probably you do the same. So in this video, I'm going to do two things I think will interest you very much. The first thing is I'm going to talk about the comps that you should not play anymore because I believe they are no longer relevant. They've been nerfed to the ground and they are now suboptimal. The second thing I want to talk about are the five comps. I believe, on the other hand, should be very very strong at the beginning of this meta and at least should be safe for you to play if you want to climb until we start to find the new techs the new spicy comps they will come naturally little by little and obviously we will talk about it so let's start with the comps that i think we should avoid right now and i'm using a tier list um, probably not updated because this is just the new patch uh, this is 13.12 uh, we are now in 13.13 .13. So I just wanted to tell you like, this comp probably you should not play it unless you have a very very good start in that case it can still be good but not as good as before it got nerfed Gunner Zeri, Zeri got destroyed many times Gunner got nerfed, Zeri got nerfed, Urgot got nerfed, the T-Hex got nerfed so honestly this comp I don't believe that this is a good comp as consistent as it used to be and I think that it could feel very underwhelming so I suggest, I suggest you to not play it then after, obviously, Garen, uh, not playable anymore. The Ziggs uh, nerf, I think, destroys Garen. Garen got nerfed as well. TF got nerfed as well. So, honestly, don't try to play this comp. Same for Echo. Uh, Echo got nerfed. Chalice got nerfed. Um, this just makes this comp really not uh, playable anymore. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, yes, there's one that's not here. Is the Bastion, uh, the sudden surge of Bastion that happened around this weekend and beginning of this week. It got completely destroyed, uh, at least on the Iron Locket, uh, no, Locket of the Iron Solari. Um, so I still think Bastion can be a good frontline, but definitely you cannot abuse it like you used to or like other people used to do. And I think this is why you should avoid this if you don't know how to play uh, a strong board, I would say. But you can still play this comp if you have a lot of two stars, for instance, in stage two, and you just play strong board, and then after you transition to something, basically you play TFT normally. You don't int your game to force Bastion, Gale, and then Aphelios, and then lose, obviously. So before we talk about the five comps which are strong right now from the first day of the patch, I wanted to talk about the weekly meta analysis that I can send it to you for free every week on your mailbox, for that, you just need to click on the link in the description and add your email address. I will send you every week the five comps that you should focus on if you want to climb and have fun with TFT. That way, you don't even need to think and scout for the meta because I do this job for you. So you can just read it very fast and start your game and climb the ladder. So I believe this comp I'm showing right now is probably the strongest comp at the beginning of this meta. This comp was already very, very good uh, between A plus and S tier in the previous patch, and it didn't get nerfed at all. It didn't get touched at all. And this is why I believe like since the other S tier comps got nerfed drastically, these comps will remain at the top and will be dominant in this 13.13 .13 meta. So Yasuo with Ionia and Challengers. Just so you know, this comp is also very, very good. If you have an Ionian spat, you can put on Kesa. You can also put on uh, Aphelios if you want, but usually let's say you don't have enough AD stuff for Yasuo and Aphelios at the same time. So that's why you go with Kesa. Um, so you can better um, spread all your items, unless you play TF of course, but this comp actually is better not to play TF. You have many other legends that are much better. And obviously you want to play this comp if you have a good start with Ionia because the transition is very easy. You put the AD stuff on Jin, you put the AP stuff on Kalista or Karma, depending on what you have first. And of course, all the tank items goes on Shen, so you can use Set as a holder for Shen in the early game for the tank items. One last detail I want to say, uh, Yasuo, you really want to position not at the center, but slightly on the side and first row, uh, if he's full stuff, two stars, because that way he can one shot some carries from the beginning of the fight. Uh, if you put it here, for instance, most of the time he will come here and then after he use his tornado on the front line here and he stay stuck on the, mid, uh, the mid, middle of the board. While if you put it here, he can use the tornado on diagonal like this and uh, hit the carries. It's not guaranteed, but 
it happens more often than if you were putting your Ayazu here. Okay, second comp, I believe this one will be underestimated at first, but very strong after uh, people start to understand this comp. So this comp, in case you didn't know, this comp is more like a B tier, A minus tier uh, in the previous patch. But since, like I said earlier, most S tier comps got nerfed and four strategies got slightly buffed, not much, but slightly, same for three Ishurima. Um, this actually makes this comp much better uh, at a much better spot than before. The other problem also of this comp before was, uh, since it was a level seven meta, uh, it was kind of hard to reward for Nazis, Jarvan, Azir, and Lux at level seven. But since now, I think we will shift slowly towards level eight meta because uh, all level seven comps got nerfed heavily. And also because uh, we get less player damage at stage four. So it mean, just means that naturally it will be more comfortable for us to push level eight and you have more chance to fight this comp. So in the early game, you want to play with Static uh, uh, because Static is one of the best items you can have in the early game. And then slowly, by uh, little by little, you add some AP stuff on either Sorcerers or Multicasters. And your tank has, uh, tank item, you put it on, on obviously your, your tanks. And then after uh, level 7, if you're low on health or level 8, if you're high on, he on health, you transition out of your early mid-game comp into Azir Lux. You want to make sure that Lux has only two items because you want her to have the Radiant item unless you don't have tank items and you only have DPS items. Then in that case, you want to make sure that the Radiant items goes on Javan, so you still have a good front line. All right, onto the third comp. This one is already known, is Noxus Reroll. Um, it didn't get nerfed at all. It didn't get touched at all. In fact, actually Slayers got slightly, not slightly, got a good buff, actually. It was a really good buff. So obviously, if you can have the Noxus Spatula, pull it on our trucks, and this will become an S plus tier comp. Uh, if you don't have the spatula, it's still a A plus, S minus comp. So very, very relevant. Um, for instance, if you hit the Darius and Katarina very fast, um, you can literally snowball and win the game from that. It's also a comp that really likes to have spatulas. Um, so Nexus Emblem is good. Juggernaut Emblem is good. Slayer Emblem is good now because it got, it got buffed. So you can have Slayer either on Katarina or Darius, for instance. That doesn't sound stupid at all. And you can snowball from that. One thing I want to say about this comp is if at level 7 you have Katarina 2, Darius 2 and you have your comp, but you are too contested because someone else is playing it, or you didn't manage to stack your Noxus stacks properly, or somehow you feel like you're too far from Darius 3 or Katarina 3, you can use this comp without our trucks and you have 6 Noxus, or maybe you don't even have 6 Noxus, you have 3 Noxus plus some Juggernauts because that's everything you found. You can use this comp as a transition for a new comp that I believe will dominate the meta um, very, very strongly. So it's the Slayer with Shadow Isle. So as you know, Gwen got buffed, Atrox got buffed, Slayer got buffed. Um, I think this is enough reasons to think that this comp has the potential to be a next tier comp, especially now we have figured out the mid game transition to go into that because the problem is um, it's hard to find Artrox and Senna uh, at level 8. Uh, sometimes you don't find it, or you need to have a lot of gold in order to find them, or you need to push level 9. But you can't push level 9 if you don't have a very, very strong mid game. And we just found the key for the strong mid game with Darius and Katarina. Katarina can hold the items for Gwen, Darius can hold the items for Artrox. Um, for here, for instance, I put double Titans and uh, Quicksilver. It means that I do believe Artrox is slightly more flexible than Darius when it comes to items. And that's why I think actually double Titan plus QSS is, pro is probably the best combo uh, for our trucks. Um, but anyway, you can use IE, uh, Titan, uh, BT. It works very well together. Uh, no problem with that. Just so you know, uh, previous patch, I had a game where I wanted to play Noxus and I couldn't find uh, the Darius and everything. Instead, I switched into something very similar to this and I managed to secure top two. Um, so I think that with the current buffs on Slayers and uh, Trucks and Gwen, I will have uh, won the game. Uh, ah, no, I couldn't because it was against the KSA 3. So whatever, no, an RE 3. I lost uh, to a RE 3. So anyway, whatever the comp I was playing, <laughs> I think I would have lost. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you that this comp has 
clearly the potential to be a S tier comp and I want to show you that before anyone else tells you to so. And one last thing, it's another niche comp, but that was already particularly strong in some certain scenarios. And I think for the same reason as Ionia and all of that, uh, this comp can become very relevant because it didn't get touched and most S tier comps got nerfed. So this comp naturally will relatively be stronger than the others. Uh, it's six sorcerers and with three Demacia, obviously, because I think whenever we want to play Lux, we want to add three Demacia. It's just we have Lux and Jarman, which are both incredible units, and it's easy to add another one, uh, Demacia, just to have a Radiant item on Lux. Your main carry will be Lux, and Ari, obviously your very late game is Ari, should be the one that will make you win the very late game, while Lux will help you to win the late game. So the, the, the stage 4 and stage 5, for instance, but stage 6, you need to rely on Ari for sure if you want to win. One thing I like about Sorcerer is that when you have 6 of them, the, whenever a sorcerer kills a unit, they deal damage that spreads to two targets instead of one. And when you have a lot of sorcerers like this, uh, you can literally wipe a board, especially with Ari, in like one second. Um, it's like everyone is almost alive and healthy, and suddenly they all die instantly because um, there's just too, too much spread damage. So that's a really good comp. I think that you should consider. Um, you can play this comp with an early strategies, with an early... Um, sorcerer on an early multicaster and after switching to that little by little. As for the legends, I think it's still a bit too early to be able to decide which legends are the best. I do think that TF and Orn got nerfed drastically, but actually that's good uh, because they were just too strong. And I personally think I will start with playing with Poro at the first because I like to play flexible and I like to try different stuff to be able after to decide which legends are the best. Um, this is how I like to learn things. This is how I like, I think, to uh, test and not just try to play always the strongest thing possible and never learn about all the other possibilities, all the off meta comps that are actually fun to play. These are the five comps I will try to prioritize on my games today and tomorrow until we start to figure out the meta in a couple of days. If you have an issue with the early game, if you feel that most of the time your early games suck, and you just can't win the early game or you lose too much health or you don't have enough economy, maybe you're doing some mistakes. And I'm showing in this video exactly how you should apply either the low tempo or the high tempo playstyle so you can adapt to your games and always come on top at the end of the early game. Until next time, see you at the top of the ladder.